Good afternoon, I am the Casual Collector and today I'm going to be uh, discussing uh, one of my uh, one-sixth uh, projects based off of uh, veterans of a unit known as the Studies Observation Group which was a special forces unit from the Vietnam War uh, conducting strategic recon in uh, Laos and uh, Cambodia among other duties and specifically um, I'm going to be discussing a figure based off of one of the more storied members of that unit um, Tiltmeyer, who served as the 1-0 recon team leader of Recon Team Idaho uh, throughout 1968-69 uh, and 1970s, uh, excuse me. Um, specifically, I, I based his equipment off of uh, information from his books, Across the Fence, and uh, the sequel On the Ground, and uh, some photos that I had of uh, Idaho during a uh, inspection conducted by General Stilwell in uh, preparation for the mission for the team conducting a mission on the DMZ uh, into North Vietnam. Um, I also had uh, used photos from a uh, series that I received from uh, one of my friends, uh, Doug Letourneau, who uh, is no longer with us. Um, it's also worth noting that the uh, equipment that I gave this uh, figure is actually uh, less than uh, what was uh, normally carried in the field. Um, talking with uh, Nick Brockhausen, another uh, SOG veteran, it wasn't unusual to carry uh, a thousand rounds of uh, 556 five, alone towards the, uh, the end of the war, just because of having to uh, shoot their way through their targets. In this case, he carries a car 15, M79, a uh, veritable plethora of grenades, including uh, some of the V40 uh, micro grenades, which are in this pouch here. Uh, survival axe, and uh, just a veritable walking arsenal. And uh, unfortunately, with this scale, it is not possible to uh, load everything that he should carry. So. Instead of a full uh, combat load of magazines, he's only carrying about, uh, let's see here, 20 rounds of, of tw 20, uh, 20, 20 sets of 20 round mags, plus uh, the usual grenades, uh, frags, uh, mini grenades, and uh, Willy Pete on the, on the back. Um, for equipment, let's see if I can move this out of the way. First thing you might notice, aside from the uh, the bar belt, which is a uh, World War II piece of web gear, which was frequently used due to its uh, substantial uh, carrying capacity, is that the uh, uniform is heavily modified. Uh, Tilt modifies the uniform with zippered pockets on both shoulders and on the uh, waist area, which we can see here. For uh, extra carrying capacity, he's uh, wearing a set of uh, point man gloves. The fingers cut off on uh, the middle and trigger fingers on the right hand and the thumb, excuse me. And uh, this was used for for pushing through uh, heavy vegetation, um, just because the uh, the vegetation the the Vines, thorns would just cut the crap out of your hands. So this this was very necessary for protecting yourself. The uh, M79, shortened right here, was uh, used as a break contact weapon for uh, breaking through ambushes. And the CAR-15 was a uh, shortened version of the uh, M16, which uh, debuted during the war. The uh, Colt Company initially ran a version, the XM-177E1, that had a shorter barrel, but uh, proved to be uh, uncontrollable under, well, less controllable under full, full auto. So they slightly lengthened it. You can see that there's uh, tape to hold the handguard together and on, on the uh, end of the barrel for keeping out moisture and dirt from uh, getting in there. You can uh, also see that the uh, ends of the uh, pants are taped as well for keeping out leeches. 
Other equipment note is the uh, PRC 25, 25, which is in the uh, backpack and the handset is sticking out of the shirt. There is normally a, a wire connecting the handset to the radio. However, unfortunately, when I was uh, pulling this uh, figure out, the uh, wire completely snapped in half and uh, I need to get a replacement for it, unfortunately. Uh, as team leader, he uh, told, would typically carry the radio uh, on missions so that he would have a, a much easier time talking to Covey, uh, their air support, and uh, requesting assistance. The uh, other piece I want to particularly note here is uh, this. It's a, a survival axe, a Woodson's Pal axe. And uh, this particular piece is very hard to uh, get because I had to get it uh, custom made, unfortunately, from a, a gentleman in the Philippines. Let's see if I can get this out here. But this nasty piece was for uh, clearing up um, brush. And uh, it's a real beauty. It's one of a kind, and it uh, <laughs> costs as much as the uh, rest of the equipment combined on this guy. Uh, let's take a look at the back. Of course, there's a uh, set of rope for making Swiss seats. And you uh, get a nice, lovely view of the uh, indigenous uh, CISO uh, rucksack, which uh, they made specifically emulating uh, the NVA rucks and uh, was much, much prized by Special Forces during the war. So that about covers the, uh, the gear. Um, I had at one point hope to make a full uh, team for Idaho. The uh, figures that I did of uh, Lynn Black, uh, Tilt, and uh, my buddy Doug were, were uh, a joy to make. I, I really enjoyed making them. Fortunately, the, uh, the only Indig I've ever actually finished is uh, Sun over there, simply because there is an unfortunate lack of uh, Vietnamese head sculpts in the market. I really wanted to make uh, uh, Sun uh, Tuan, the Grenadier, Sal, the team leader, and uh, Hiaip, the, uh, the interpreter, but uh, that is uh, sadly going to take some more time and will be for another day. But uh, I hope you enjoyed this figure. It was a very, uh, very interesting project to work on, trying to get it accurate, and uh, please feel free to point out any inaccuracies or uh, problems uh, that I have. Thank you and have a nice day.